What is going on you guys? My name is Daniel and welcome back to the channel where we go over things mirrorless Canon cameras. And today we're going to be showing you how to use your R6 to get 120 frames a second and it's going to be super buttery slow motion, cinematic, and everything. Roll my clip. So that was the very first clip I've ever shot on the R6. I haven't had time to really mess around with it, but it was super enjoyable with the IBIS and everything. It's super nice. So very first things we need to get into are more of like ergonomics with this camera, or I guess not ergonomics, but just like how it's built. It shoots in a hundred, uh, it shoots 1080p and 120 frames a second. There is no sound, even though I don't know, I have a clue why you would want that, but there is no sound. And then it will roll back when you look on the back screen and play back, it will show you what it is at a quarter speed. And when you drop it into your actual video editing software, it will come out at 30 frames a second. So in order to compensate for that, you because for cinematic frame rates, for those of you that aren't in the know, it is about 24 frames a second. And that means that you can eke out another four frames a second out of your slow motion. So in order to do this, you go into here, you stretch out your actual video clip and then take this bar and drop it down to 80%. That will give you exactly 120 frames a second being used throughout your entire clip at a cinematic frame rate. In other words, 23.89 frame rate or 24. Next up is shutter speed. So your shutter speed to be cinematic in theory should be exactly twice of what your frame rate is. So instead of being 120, it should be double that. So 240. I tend to enjoy a little bit more motion blur in my 120 frames a second. So I do it a little bit lower than that, but to have true cinematic effect. And the reason this works is because it gives a natural looking motion blur as things move through your frames. This is a much bigger deal in, when shooting 24 frames a second, which is much closer to the cinematic. Another thing in settings is native ISO is once again 400. You can drop it down to 100, but it isn't native because you'll get the largest amount of detail. That means the dynamic range between the black and the white on the color scale. What, <clears throat> the black and the white on the color scale when you are at 400 because that will give you all the stops of dynamic range that this camera has to offer. Whereas if you go below that or above that, you will miss out on a little bit, but it is better to overexpose than underexpose, leading us into our next tip, which is the zebra lines. So let's get into the settings to shoot C-Log and 120 frames a second and some things that will help you to do this and shoot better. Some settings that I'll show you. There's about four stops that we're gonna make inside the camera settings. Let's get into it. I'm gonna try and hold this as still as possible for you guys. First up, we are going to go into turning it into 120 frames a second. So you're gonna to need to go into video quality and then you're gonna go into high frame rate enabled. It's normally gonna be disabled and that'll only allow you to shoot in 60 frames a second. So you go over and hit enabled. Then our next stop is going to be right here, Canon C-Log settings. You're gonna turn that on and view assist on helps so that it's a little bit easier to know how to shoot. As well as having a histogram always up that will help you get the perfect exposure and here's a video how to set that up in the viewfinder and the back set. Color matrix on neutral and I haven't figured out what are good characteristics yet so we won't go into those. Our next stop is well the image stabilization and you want to make sure that's on because it's super awesome to have IBIS inside this camera. Unless you're shooting on a tripod then you're probably going to want to turn that off. Next is the zebra lines, and if you turn this on, then you'll be able to see, I'll show you right here. So if you see this, there are no zebra lines right now because it's perfectly exposed, but as soon as you bring this up, you can see those lines coming in, and that's where it's starting to get overexposed. So if you only have a few lines, like right there, there's only a few lines right back there, that's about where your perfect exposure will be for this particular scene. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for all things mirrorless Canon cameras so that you can get better shooting video and photos on your R6. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share this as well. Take care.